Good afternoon, my beautiful believer. My name is Susan von Schumann, and welcome to Boot Camp to Beautiful. It's my beautiful believer Bible study boot camp, and I'm taking you from brokenness to beautiful and teaching you your the spiritual issues of your heart, biblical principles of healing, and spiritual roots of disease. And so welcome. This is actually session one, and I'm walking you, it's called The Sanctification of the Heart, and it's from um, the path of life, from creation to redemption, from brokenness to beautiful, and it's the path of life on this journey that I'm going to be taking you um, on. Join my Facebook page with the same name, My Beautiful Believer, um, breathing life into the broken, and things will be posted there, and as we will, I'll give special things that are in that group because it's my, it's my private group page, and it's, um, it's private for those who are clients and for those who are watching this video teaching series, and we can talk and pray, and I'm posting extra things in, in that group. And so please ask to join that group. It's a private group on Facebook. And so I can include you in that ministry as well. And I'm sharing my heart with you in the heart of heaven for every beautiful believer living broken. And this is actually a ministry to the broken body of Christ. And so here I am sharing the beginning of my story and I'm walking you from brokenness to beautiful, which is a process of the sanctification of your heart and the transformation of your spiritual mindset from, from death to life, from sickness to health, from bondage to freedom and from brokenness to beautiful. And I have prayers of poetry and inspirational words of from the Lord that I'm sharing at the beginning and each at the end of each of these sessions and uh, let me begin by praying so father thank you thank you for this new season thank you for this um, new ministry father that's that's been in my heart for so long. And thank you, God, for the release of this time and this season of suffering. And thank you, God, for the miracles that will come from it. I pray, God, that you would uh, draw every single person who needs to hear this message from the healing, hearing, uh, healing heart of heaven, that they would become, uh, come to love you and come to believe you and come to, mm, understand the heart of heaven and I thank you God for your for my life and I thank you God for this ministry and thank you God for the your words that you have to say to those who are living broken to those who have been broken by somebody in the body of Christ Lord we thank you father for this day I thank you for this ministry and this time bless my words in Jesus name amen Amen. Are you weeping? Are you weeping, Lord Jesus, when your spirit is grieved? As you watch while your children are slowly deceived, do you sigh as a mourner who mourns for the lost while you see your own sheep pay a desperate cost? They're losing their lives, giving in to disease They, as they pray not for healing, but only for peace. They have lost their faith in the God who heals men, saying yesterday's wonders were only for then, they no longer believe. In the wonders and signs that you sovereignly did within biblical times. And they say that the, those gifts you dispersed to your sheep were for only a few and for them not to keep. For the words of your power have been somehow misread. And the babes have, are then taught by those sadly misled. The whole of this teaching is the fruit of a lie, and because of this fruit, there are people who die. Lord, we claim all the power that you have to give, for we know that in you we may reign, at, not just live at the moment you died. By your blood we were sealed, 
by our sins, all forgiven by your stripes, we were healed. And the power which now raised you to where you now sit was meant also for us if we just ask for it. For time has gone on, it seems ages have passed. Yet the pool is untapped because no one has asked. Father, pour out your might. Pour out on us your incredible might. Pour upon us your spirit that we might win the fight. Let your healing begin to the vessels you made. For it's time that we build on the groundwork you've laid. Let the blind see again and the lame start to walk. Let the deaf hear the sound of the mute as they talk. Let the faith of a child raise the sick from their bed. Let the voice of a warrior call men back from the dead. Let the body of Christ prove your power in word and let faith follow quickly when your message is heard. Through the oneness of us, your temple will stand and the works we will do will be that of your hand. And all glory and honor will be given to you. And the, as the world sees the signs and the wonders will do, and your children who doubted will no longer say that the Spirit of God does not move today. Amen. Thank you for my miracle. Psalm 56, 12 through 13. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. I, wilt thou not deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? That is what I am doing now. God has healed me with four miracles, that I can walk before God in the light of the living and shine his beautiful light. And this is the sanctification of the heart from brokenness to beautiful, the path of life on this journey. Ezekiel 34, 11 and 12 says, For thus says the Lord God, Indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep. So I will seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. I know that many of us have had friends, loved ones who have died of this disease of cancer, which I have battled, where cancer has taken a hold of them and they have not been able to overcome it or coronavirus or from some other sickness or disease such as Huntington's disease. Many have had multitudes of people praying for them uh, like I did and they have gone to the elders of the church time and time again, been anointed with oil and have not been healed. Many are still battling their diseases. Many have lost their battle and, have, and we have lost them. When disease overcomes us, we are overcome. Now the world and the nations are being overcome and have been for a few years now, not only by a disease on the inside of us, but we are being overcome by a disease on the outside of us, by a plague, a pandemic of phenomenal proportions, coronavirus. Many of us still are suffering from the lingering effects of it. For someone to say that a person hasn't, wasn't healed because of his faith, wasn't, wasn't strong enough, is a distortion of the truth. This brings condemnation against the church and against God. And then we become disillusioned with God and we lose our faith. We are told in the word of God that the body of Christ is to take care of one another through the ministry of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and through the gifts of administration. The body of Christ has been equipped to meet the needs of the body of Christ, especially in the area of healing. We are commanded and exhorted in the word of God to live in unity and in love with the power of Christ evident to the world around us. First John 3, 23 through 24 says, and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of the Son, Jesus, of His Son Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. And 
and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us matthew 8 17 says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses first Thessalonians 5 23 and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ 3 John 2 beloved I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul Prospereth. Lamentations 3 19 through 24. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet I call this, yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. We are told to pray for one another, and they will be healed. We are told to pray for the sick, and they will, will recover. We are told in James 5, 13 through 20, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him Call for the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults, one to another, and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his ways has shall save a soul from death. And shall hide a multitude of sins. My beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ, we have erred from the truth. He which converteth a sinner from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death. It may be your own. A survey was taken across the country in churches to see how, how many who had been prayed for and anointed with oil for sickness and disease went away healed and churches it was only two to five percent that claimed that they had been miraculously healed this is less than five percent there must be a reason our local pastors ministers and lay leaders are not equipped or trained to minister healing to the emotionally broken to the physically broken or to the spiritually broken body of christ within our own congregations or within the surrounding commu communities. As the global church we have, we have here and around the world, we have lot sought God first for our healing. As a society within the body of Christ, we seek first our medical communities when we need physical healing and our help, yet we are not healed. We seek first our psychological communities when we need emotional healing and we are helped yet we are not healed we seek first our churches or religious communities as believers for spiritual healing and we are helped yet we are not healed and yet somehow as believers we are still living broken as a broken body of believers we have stopped believing in the power of God to heal us we've stopped believing in the healing heart of heaven. We have not understood our spiritual responsibility for this mandate of ministry among us. The Church of Jesus Christ is supposed to be a place of healing for the sick, for the oppressed, for the rejected, for the abused.
for the broken. Ezekiel 34, 5 and 6 says, They were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they become food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through the all through the mountains and on every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered over the whole face of the earth, and no one was seeking or searching for them. We, as sheep, have been scattered because there was no shepherd. We have become food for all the beasts of the field, scattered over the whole face of the earth. We, as, broke, as a broken body of believers, have sent our own broken ones away and out of our midst for healing ministry. This is not scriptural. There is nowhere to go. There is no healing ministry among us for believers within the local body of Christ. We have erred in the truth from the truth. We have sent our emotionally weary and wounded warriors away. I was one of them battling abuse. We have sent our physically broken believers away. I was one of them battling breast cancer. We have sent our, our spiritually sick soldiers away. I was one of them battling traumatic brain injury and the her hereditary disease of Huntington's. We have sent those with broken bones and broken bodies away. I was one of them with a broken femur and out of our midst for healing. We have lost our way because we have not known our way. I am here to help show you the way to healing brokenness and recovering beauty. The truth is, is that all healing is spiritual first, all life begins and ends with God. Therefore, all healing begins and ends with God. All healing begins at the spiritual level through a process of the sanctification of the heart. All healing begins the same because healing begins in the heart. The brokenness of our hearts, the brokenness of our physical bodies, and the brokenness of the spiritual body of Christ are all a result of our own and individual spiritual brokenness. They are all a result of our own and individual spiritual health. This is why all sickness and disease are different. This is why we each individually experience disease differently. This is why we each and individually experience can suffer symptoms of the same disease differently in our physical bodies. This is why some of us are constantly and chronically sick, suffering chronic diseases and ailments, or have been diagnosed with autoimmune diseases early on in life. This is why some of us will battle cancer and some of us will never be susceptible to the curse of it. This is why some of us will get coronavirus and some of us will not. This is why some of us will die in our disease and some of us will not. Don't you want to know why? This is very important, my beautiful one. There's a spiritual dynamic to disease. There's a spiritual dynamic, medical and psychological, psychological communities do not see or cannot treat. There's a spiritual dynamic to the physical and psychological brokenness coming down through my and your family trees. This, there's a spiritual dynamic to why we're suffering symptoms of sickness and disease. There's a spiritual dynamic to why we are battling, battling brokenness, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Brokenness begets brokenness. Beauty begets beauty. It is the spirit, it is a spiritual issue of the heart. The Church of Jesus Christ has failed to minister to the needs of the sick, which is why we have delegated our physical health to the medical community instead of, of to our spiritual one. We have dropped the ball in many congregations across the, this nation and around the world and have not seen the healing body of Christ as the, the response. We have not seen healing the healing of the body of Christ as the responsibility of the church. We have lost the power in the pulpit to heal. Many, maybe because we have stopped believing that God can and will heal. 
Maybe because we have seen so many die in sickness and disease, even in the body of Christ, Christians who love and the Lord perish in their lack of knowledge because they only see it as a physical battle and not as a spiritual one. My beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ, we have a spiritual enemy, Satan, who is alive and well, who is destroying the body of Christ through sickness and disease and is getting away with it. He distorts our image of God and our image of the power of God and lies to us about our identity as children of God. He leads us away from the truth of the word of God. And we stay stuck in a place of brokenness, in sickness and disease, and he steals our hope. We believe the power of the pit is greater than the power of the love of God, but it is the love of God that sustains us, that rescues us, that heals us. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. We have believed the lies so long that we don't believe anymore. I've seen the broken body of Christ. I've been the broken body of Christ. Our spiritual body as a whole is broken and needs to be healed. It is through the spiritual brokenness. It is through this spiritual brokenness that we have become weak and unable to stand. We are spiritually sick as a church, as the body of Christ. And this is why we are being, and this is why we are not being healed physically. This is what, this is why we are not being healed when we are prayed for and anointed with oil. This is why we are sick and die in our disease. We're also, we're, we're not trained in righteousness. We're not being taught how to fight our spiritual battles. We're spiritually sick saints and we're suffering as a church body and we're not being ministered to in the area of spiritual, emotional, or physical health. We are taught about salvation. We are taught about evangelism. We are taught about missions. We are taught about grace. We are taught about ministry. We are taught to serve and to minister to the needs of those around us all around the world. And yet, we are not taught to minister to the spiritual, emotional, and physical brokenness of those who are within our own walls of our houses of worship. We are not taught about healing. We are not taught about the sanctification of the heart. We are not taught how to heal the broken. We are not, we are all living broken and we are in desperate need of the healing power of God within the church. We are desperate, we are in desperate need for the healing heart of heaven. Healing in the body of Christ begins by walking in obedience. Healing in our bodies begins the same way. Healing begins with the sanctification of our hearts. The body of Christ is not sanctified. Be ye holy as I am holy. Sin has entered in and we have allowed it to stay to the point that we are spiritually blind to it. Psalm 103, 3 says, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, James 5, 15 through 16. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James 5, 19 and 20, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. As a broken body of believers, we have stopped believing in the power of God to heal us. We have stopped believing in the healing heart of heaven. We have been dying in our disease because we're still suffering 
We've been dying in our disease because we are still suffering the sins of our fathers from the iniquity that has been physically, spiritually, physically, and psychologically passed down through the generations. We are dying of our disease because of our own unforgiveness and the bitterness of our, that comes with it, and we harbor hatred in our hearts. We have been dying in, in our disease because we are blind, have been blind to our spiritual enemy and have not rec even recognized the spiritual battle we are in. We have been dying in our disease because we have hated God in our hearts and we have hated our brother and sister. The body of Christ is broken and therefore our bodies are broken with sickness and disease. We are spiritually sick first. We are physically and psychologically sick. We must address the spiritual issues of our own hearts first. We must recognize and learn the lies that we have believed. And we must learn the truth of God's word. God wants to heal our wounded spirits. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captives free. He also wants to heal your physical bodies. Healing begins in the hearts. God wants to heal your broken heart first. And so you can become the beautiful believer he has created you to be. It is the act of confession and repentance. It is in the act of confession and repentance that we are healed. Romans 3, 37, 8, 37. Romans 8, 37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Isaiah 33, 2. Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Be our strength every morning. Our salvation in time of distress. Psalm 103, 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases. And James 5, 15 through 16, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, he shall be forgiven him. And Revelation 3, 19 and 20, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come to him and will sup with him, and he with me. This is why, this, the reason why is a spiritual battle of brokenness. We have not been taught it. This is, it is a battle we have not fought. We live it in a world of brokenness, broken relationships, broken lives, and broken hearts. All of it affected our ability to experience the love of God in the midst of our own suffering, as believers, we stop believing. We stop believing there is a God. We stop believing God is good. We stop believing the, the love of, in the love of God because someone who was supposed to love us broke us. Someone we believed in broke our heart. Our foundation is shaken. Our security is taken. So we, ne so we stop believing the beautiful, the precious promises of God in the word of God we stop believing in the healing heart of heaven. Ezekiel 34, 4 says, The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who were sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought what was lost. But with force and cruelty you have ruled them. We stop believing the beautiful. We stop begin, and we begin believing the brokenness. We believe the brokenness because we have lived the brokenness. The brokenness is all we know. We believe it. We receive it. We agree with it. We become one with it. And our body conforms to our mind. We become what we believe. We are what we believe in our hearts. I believe, therefore I am. We have become those emotionally weary and wounded warriors. We have become those physically broken believers. We have become the spiritually sick soldiers. Together we have become the broken body of Christ. Ezekiel 34, 11 and 12 says, For thus is the Lord God. I, and indeed I myself, will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock on a day, he is among his scattered sheep. 
So I will seek out the sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. We have become what we believe. We have not understood the spiritual reality of our brokenness. We have, therefore, we have not been healed emotionally. We have not been healed physically, and we have not been healed spiritual. Spiritually, we come to the house of God, hearing the word, but leave without healing it in our hearts. We have not understood the spiritual reality of our healing, even as faithful followers of Christ. Therefore, we are prayed for, and we are not healed. We are anointed with oil, and yet we are not healed. We come week after week, seeking God, believing for our healing, until we no longer believe anymore. We are weary and well-doing well and beaten by our own battles of brokenness. I have been here. Are you here now? Our ministers and lay leaders in the body of Christ have not understood biblical principles of healing, spiritual roots of disease, or the spiritual issues of our hearts. So they have not understood how to minister healing to the broken among us. And we, the sheep, are left living broken, abandoned, and neglected, lost, and unprotected. As believers, we have not believed in, in our hearts. We have not witnessed miracles, signs, and wonders in our congregations. Therefore, we have stopped believing in the healing heart of heaven. So miracles have stopped. We have not, we, we have not, because we've asked not. We've stopped believing in them. We've stopped believing for them. We've stopped expecting them. And we've stopped asking for them. We've stopped allowing the Holy Spirit to move within our churches, within our fellowships, within our congregations, within our hearts. We have cut off the miracle working power of God, the flowing, the flow of the living waters at its source through our own unbelief. Church after church, pulpit after pulpit, minister after minister, teacher after teacher, and preacher after preacher, believer after believer, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit has left the building. And yet the healing heart of heaven has never left. Only believe I am a miracle. I am a sign. I am a wonder to every beautiful believer in living broken. Ezekiel 34, 7 through 10 says, Therefore you shepherds hear the word of the Lord as I live, says the Lord God. Surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became food for every beast of the field because there was no shepherd, nor did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep, and the shepherds shall feed themselves no more. And I will deliver my flock from their mouths, that they may no longer be food for them. God has made known to us the path of life in, in his word. In his word. The, his path. His life. His word. This. The word. The word of God. Is the heart of God. And when we align our hearts with the heart of heaven, the heart of heaven happens here. Healing. Heaven happens here. Healing happens here. Miracles, signs, and wonders happen here. The ministry and teachings of my beautiful believer, breathing life into the broken, is a message of healing from the heart of heaven to every beautiful believer living broken. It is a testimony of the truth. It is a transformational journey. It is a transformational spiritual journey of healing from creation to redemption and from brokenness to beautiful. It is a walk in the word beginning with God before brokenness when the heart of heaven was here at creation and shares the love of God for every beautiful believer. 
I will take you from the beautiful in the beginning, beyond brokenness, from bond and from bondage to butterflies into the beautiful in the becoming, where the heart of heaven is here after redemption and available to us all today. Today, now, we are each on a different and individual journey of brokenness and therefore we each need our own personal path of healing, recovering beauty, the recovering the beauty that was lost. But God does it all. He is your healer and he wants to reveal his heart to you and heal the brokenness of yours. You are on a transformational journey of the sanctification of your heart. You are beautiful. You are worth it. Believe it. This on this My Beautiful Believer Boot Camp to Beautiful Bible Study Boot Camp. We will walk together through a 90-day transformational spiritual boot camp from creation to redemption. From brokenness to beautiful, learning biblical principles of healing, spiritual roots to disease, and the spiritual issues of your own broken heart. You will you will learn a step-by-step -step process walking biblically through the sanctification and healing of your heart, learning the spiritual issues of your own brokenness, changing toxic toxic beliefs to healthy biblical ones, bringing a transformation of your spiritual mindset, and with it, the healing of your heart and the restoration of all brokenness, emotional, physical, and spiritual. Ezekiel 34, 11 and 12 says, for thus says the Lord God, indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out as a shepherd seeks out his flock on, on a day he is among his scattered sheep. So I will seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they are scattered to on a cloudy and dark day. It has been a cloudy and dark day. And this is a message from the Father. My beautiful one, you were born to be beautiful. You were born from the heart of heaven to believe in your heart. You were created perfectly in my sight and in my image as an image bearer of light and life and beauty. As an image bearer, you are trying and being created in spirit, in mind, and in body. You are one, just as I am one. Together, we are one. The brokenness of this world and sin have brought brokenness to our relationship, to all relationships. Separation, isol isolation, and rejection are all a result of the brokenness in my beautiful body of believers. Unity and community are broken as a result. The harmony of my beautiful body of believers has been broken. The heart of my beautiful body of believers has been broken. The hope of my beautiful body of believers has been broken. You have not known the heart of heaven. You have forgotten your first love. You have forgotten the heart of heaven, but heaven has not forgotten you. You are the heart of heaven, my beautiful believer. I am breathing life into the broken. Only believe. My beloved spoke to me and said, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me, your heavenly Father. Father, thank you for this, these words. Thank you for these words of hope. Thank you for these words of, these, of this journey. Thank you for the healing heart of heaven. Thank you that you will sanctify your church, that you will create your beautiful bride. And that you will heal the broken body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this path of life that you have brought to us in your word. And that thank you for the path of life that you will bring. The healing to the hearts. The healing to the lives. The healing to the bodies and the broken body of Christ. I thank you, God, that you will do it. And I thank you for your, the healing heart of heaven. We love you, Lord. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for your blood. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me. This was session one. And I'll see you next week on 
Tuesday at Tuesdays and Thursdays for at 2 o'clock Texas time, Central Standard Time. See you then.